So did at that time, did you associate this change in your mood with the stroke or did you think it was something separate? No, I didn't really realise the change in mood. I, I really, I wasn't fully aware that the stroke had so much to do with that. I just thought it was generally me being so, feeling so low and feeling, um, there's such a, a loss feeling with as well because nothing, nothing is quite the same and you know it's not going to be and when they're looking at your house and they're you know, deciding what you need fitted, it's not that you don't appreciate it, it's just that you keep thinking, you know, this is, this is my house and it's, everything is going to change and I'm never going to be the same again. You know, mm. that was actually, um, and although the physiotherapists were absolutely tremendous and they helped tremendously because that they're part of the job, but um, I think they realised that I needed the extra mm. help. Fortunately. So how did you cope with those feelings at first? Not very well. I think it must have been quite difficult for my family because I, when they were encouraging me, I must admit I would sometimes be sitting thinking it's all right for them to say, you know, things will get better and you'll get better, but they're not, they don't really realise what it's like and um, Sometimes I actually felt a little bit resentful of that, and I don't think I could have been the easiest person um, to be with, to be quite truthful. But they kept kept with it, fortunately. Did you feel at that time your mood was affecting your rehabilitation? How you were able to progress because your mood was interfering almost? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. Moods, uh, the moods were really. They seem to actually practically take a bit of control of you because the days I felt a little bit better, I would say, right, you know, I'll try and be positive. But when the moods come, when the mood comes, it's just this feeling of total inadequacy. You can't, you don't know what you're going to be able to do. You can't do the things you did. And also it affects you know, it's, it's, it's not just your mood, it, it was affecting my thinking skills, it was affecting my writing skills, everything. So I didn't really feel quite the same person. And you it was very frustrating. At all. And I had been a very active person, so there was a big loss side to all of this. Looking back on it now, would you say that mood change affected your stroke recovery? Yes, I think if I had gone on and I hadn't got to the psychologist, it would very definitely have badly affected my stroke recovery. Mm -hmm. Because without some willpower and some belief, a great deal of belief that you are going to get stronger and um, it's very difficult to actually spur yourself on and make yourself do certain things, mm -hmm. you know. So how have your mood difficulties changed? What, where are you now? My mood difficulties have improved greatly. Um, I know now that I can't dwell on what I can't do and I know now what I can do and that has improved greatly and that's what I concentrate on now and I don't sit and think about what I can't do. I actually think I've learned to accept that and I accept it and I have a stick and I have a frame and I go out with that and, um, you know, I think to myself, this is great because I've got my independence and that is such an important part. And I think it's the psychological side that helps very much too. I mean, the, the therapists are marvellous and they all do a tremendous job and the doctors before that who actually, you know, help you and control um, your problem. Um, but I think the psychologist is where you actually start to realise, you know, what you can do and go on with it and stop thinking back. I don't dwell back now mm -hmm. on what I couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. I just keep going and I keep saying I can now, do, I mean, I'm back reading in, in the church, which meant I have to get up steps and, you know, with a stick and get my way around. and. Um, I'm back, I help with other things. I was working with a hospice. I had been doing that as a volunteer for about six and a half years. Mm. 
and um, I was back um, there. Um, they came to pick me up and take me back home on a sat at a desk doing fundraising. So it sounds but like your confidence gradually came oh back yes, as much as anything yes, else. Yes, and um, every appointment I have, there's another improvement. I always was a bit of a worrier, and um, the family used to say, if you don't have a worry, you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, once again, um, the psychology side of it was, you know, you've got two, up, two compartments, and one is, you know, when you're worrying, you say, what can I do about it? And if you can do something about it, that's that compartment, and you do something about it. And if you can't worry about it, there's nothing you can do about it. So you close that compartment. And I still, honestly, sometimes, even at night in bed when I used to lie and worry, I actually think about that. 